Hey, what's up everyone? Morty Croson here from the Performance Lab of California, and we have another new breakdown for you today. And really, it's gonna be more of a comparison breakdown with Ajay Wilson and Halima Nakai, who ended up winning the entire 800 meter gold here, and, and really giving a bit of a breakdown. Uh, what, what stands out to me is really uh, Ajay Wilson here. She is five foot eight um, in com comparison to uh, Nakai, who I, I can't even actually find her height, but you could tell she's uh, significantly shorter. She's probably closer to like five foot two. And just seeing some of the comparisons in, in terms of height uh, when, we're, when we're talking about running and, and what helps you in maintaining endurance during the entire run, because this is going to be the 800 meter. So we'll go ahead and get right into the breakdown here. So we can see Ajay Wilson here is in front and we'll go through how much time she's spending off the ground right now. So we'll go left leg. 158.05 is what we're at here until when she touches the ground. 158.52. So we're at about 0.47. And then let's compare that to Nakai, who's right here. 158.72. Oh, sorry, 82 is where we want to go here. 59, 25, 25 and 18, 35, about 0.43. So there's going to be obviously a difference within the overall height, but you can see that as of right now, Ajay Wilson has a little bit longer overall stride in comparison to Nakai, which is going to impact overall efficiency, right? So Ajay Wilson here, she has to do a good job of maintaining her overall um, pace, and, and that's what she tries to do. She goes and try to, tries to get out in front. Um, and in order to maintain her pace, she has to maintain that, that transition time or time spent off of the ground, uh, which is going to be a little bit easier because she's a little bit taller, but there's certainly going to be a long-term impact that I'll end up having. So what happens here is with that, with that number, um, with the, the overall transition time, time spent off the ground, which allows Nakai here to be a little bit more patient in her actual run, utilizing more of just just keeping pace is the big thing, right? If you're in front, then you're a little bit more of like the pace setter. But then if you're, you know, behind now, you don't have to put overall as much um, force or as much overall, you know, efficiency, use as much power, use as much of your endurance, right? You can keep a lot more of your, really the big thing is endurance if you're, if you're maintaining um, over a long period of time. And now you can see here is when Nakai starts to, to come through um, and she's continuing to just stay right, right behind Ajay Wilson, which allows her to, when she gets on this final stretch here, really open up. And this is where we can get some of the mechanic differences between uh, the two and, and something that really stands out to me. And, and I feel this too when I'm running um, is that I really start to try to open up a lot more within my upper body once I start getting a lot more tired, which she does a really good job of. If we look at to see even her when she's Went a little bit too far back. You know, like look at this part of, of her run and, and where she's at with the arms and how she keeps everything fairly close to her body, right? Everything is, look at her, her elbow and the, and the angle of the elbow as she's coming through. So she's, she's using way less overall force as she's going through at that point. But then if we get into that final hundred, which we'll get into right here, boom. Nope, nope. This is right here, final 100. Notice how Naki really starts to open up her, her overall arms and her ability to create rotation, right? So now, now look at how far out she is with her elbow and, and how much overall um, force she's creating in her, her arm strength. So she's, she's using that to help open up her stride length as well as utilizing you know, her core and, and really it's a full body thing. And this helps her because, you know, Ajay Wilson, what she kind of does is she's very, very um, focused on using her, her arms moving side to side throughout the movement, which ends up, or throughout the run, which I think ends up negatively impacting her as she goes. So she gets to the end of the run here and now she's trying to create a lot of, of a lot more overall force with her lower body because she's been using a good amount of her upper body uh, the whole time where Nakai has just been kind of, you know, just been pacing and, and not really using too much of her upper body, 
which now makes it so now when she opens up her upper body, now that also responds and makes it so her, her lower body is able to open up as well. Let's look from an overall stride perspective what some of the differences are. So now we're at 211.61. When Nakai is getting off the ground. Still not fully touched there, we'll say 212.02. And then Wilson. 212.31 to 12.77. So the big thing is, is that she went down from a 0.47 before, now is down to a 0.44, which this is a time where she really wants to be opening up a little bit more. You know, 0.44 would be okay, but she needs to be able to, to still be able to maintain her, how much she's picking up per step, right? So what I would say is that part of what's, what's happened and part of the reason why she's at 0.44 is because she's not picking up overall as much distance per stride as she was before earlier on the race. So being 5'8", being a lot taller, she wants to be able to maximize her gift and in, in that she's able to pick up more stride or more distance per stride naturally. But what we're seeing here, and then we'll compare this to here, 0.4. 0.41. So um, both of them went down a little bit. She was at 0.44 before, 0.44 to 0.41. So now she's getting better turnover, and she's also picking up more more overall distance. So you know, look at how long her stride is. She's almost striding out. Is she's striding out way longer than Audrey Wilson? You could just tell in the actual you know breakdown of it that that she was really able to maximize her ability to not only improve from a overall uh, speed and turnover perspective, right? So her transition time was better, um, but she's also picking up that much more distance in each one of her steps and really reaching out with her leg, right? So you can see that and, and how much she's able to, to reach out in front of her in comparison to, we'll go back real quick to, you know, where she's at before, like just right here, we could see, see not as much of an extension way out in front. She's, she's not gonna as much hip flexion. So as, as Najee, um, or sorry, as, as Nakai went further and further into her race, now she was able to get more and more hip flexion, able to get more and more efficiency within the actual, um, her actual form, which is what ended up making it so she was able to have some of the key successes that she had in the 800 meter. So, you know, really being able to understand the, the differences in, in what is efficient, right? So, so when you, we talk about hip flexion, driving that, that knee up when you're running, that's going to be something that is a lot less efficient, but it improves your overall speed. And so you don't want to put a, a big concentration on that at the beginning of the race, but at the end of the race, that has to be something that is um, instrumental in being able to maximize your ability to run fast. So, you know, the, the habit is, is that as you, you know, start to get closer and closer to the end of the race, you want to be able to get more and more hip flexion, which will make it so you can you should be able to create a little bit more overall efficiency with each one of your steps and that should make it so you can just pick up that much more speed and as long as you're continuing to maximize your speed now you're going to be able to to maximize your your overall um performance in something like the 800 meter which is such a, a, a distance run so if you can you know hold off your speed and make it so you can really capitalize in the last 100 meters which is even what Rage, raven rogers did here at the end she almost caught her at the end and she used a lot of the same type of techniques look at how much leg drive and knee drive she's able to get and, and that allows her to make the catch that she she did is it look how much distance she's picking up each one of her steps uh, in comparison to everybody else everybody else is very very fatigued here you know Ajay wilson's barely getting any knee drive right now where at the beginning of the race she got out in front because she was utilizing that knee drive to really be able to to maximize each one of her steps i mean you could look at let's look at raven rogers real quick and what her stride per per step is let's say 216.36 216.81. So she's at sorry, the 86. She's at 0.45, right? So she's picking up a lot of distance in each one of her steps, and she's still maintaining, maintaining a turn, really good turnover. That's a little bit behind where Nakai is right now in, in the race, but that's also 
really, really good in terms of how much distance she's catching because she almost catches her. So she's maximizing her, her, her transition time because the taller you are, the more transition time you're naturally going to have. So, you know, by RJ Wilson only having a 0.44 and Raven Rogers having a 0.45 and them being a very similar height, but you could see how much more distance that Raven Rogers get, is able to pick on each, on each one of her steps. And that's just because of maximizing her ability to drive the, the knees up and also being able to, to maximize how high she's getting during um, you know, her, her leg coming back. So that's how she's maximizing her overall efficiency in the run. So you know, there's, there ends up being big differences between different runners as you know, obviously different heights are gonna be more important than also different parts of the race. You wanna put more of a focus on you know, knee drive or more of, effect, of a focus on transition time or, or more of a focus on um, you know, arm angles. And, and so all that stuff becomes much more important at you know, the, the end, obviously, than in comparison to the beginning, but you also want to have a, a good foundation for what you're doing at the beginning, because if you're, if you're really opening yourself up a lot at the beginning of the race, now you're going to fatigue yourself and, and, you know, not be able to, to finish strong, like what, um, you know, Ajay Wilson did, um, in comparison to, you know, Raven Rogers or Nakai, who were able to, you know, stay very efficient during most of the race, and then were able to um, really open themselves up at the end, which made it so they were able to come in first and second. So, um, yeah, hopefully you guys got some good information from this, got some good biomechanical feedback. And if you have any questions, let me know. We'd be happy to answer them for you. Talk to you guys soon.